question number one. Tell me about yourself. Guys, you got to be very careful with this one. You just want to make sure that you state all the facts, all the facts about your ex previous experience, your knowledge, your education. Start from the very beginning, from your education, your formal training, to the most recent and relevant experience. Do not go into any details that are not relevant to this position, okay? Only to the desktop support. So, and don't make up stuff. Don't glorify anything. Just state the facts about things that you know, that you're familiar with, and that you're good at. Okay, because they will call you out on it. Trust me on this. Question number two. You've received a trouble ticket that monitor is not working. What is the first thing you should do? Guys, this is a pretty simple one. Okay, just start with the basics. Check the cables. Make sure everything's plugged in. Make sure everything's receiving power. If the monitor has, is receiving power, but it's not receiving the signal, chances are that the computer itself is either powered off or there's something else wrong with the cable itself that leads to the video connection okay guys this is a very simple one and chances are they will start you off with a very easy question and you should not miss this one okay question number three what is safe mode how do you get to it and what is it used for guys this is a pretty easy one too um, this is basic of Windows. Uh, in order to get to the safe mode while the computer is booting up, you would hit F8, scroll up, select safe mode. And safe mode is used to basically troubleshoot um, issues with drivers, um, hardware, uh, basically things that you cannot do in a normal mode. Also, it's used to remove viruses. So this is a safe way to remove viruses. Hence, it's the safe mode because in the safe mode, you're not connected to anything else but the, you know, you're just logged into the computer and that's what it's used for, right? So it's basically to, you know, just to kind of reiterate is to troubleshoot hardware issues, driver issues. Um, some programs you cannot remove unless you're logged into safe mode. Uh, some files will be hidden unless you log into safe mode in order to see them. And also this is how you would remove viruses safely. Okay. <laughs> Question number four, what is an IP address and how do I find out what the IP address is? Guys, the IP address is basically an address assigned to your computer on a network. So every computer on the network has an IP address as part of identification for that network. Okay. In order to find out what the IP address is, there are a couple of ways of going about this. You can go to your network communications, uh, no, I'm sorry, network connections and go to low local area connections and check the adapter settings and go to details and you will find out what the IP address is. But that's a roundabout way um, of going about this. And the second way is through the command prompt. So you go to your command prompt, type in IP config space forward slash all. And this is how you would find out what the IP address is of your computer. And also this is the best answer to give. Question number five, what is a default gateway? Guys, default gateway is found when you do a command prompt IP config all, you will see a default gateway. That number basically is a path for your computer to access other networks. So if you didn't have a default gateway on a network computer, you will not be able to reach outside of that network. As simple as that. Question number six, what is Active Directory? Active Directory is a feature of Windows Server operating system. It houses user accounts, host names, and group policies. If you get asked to give more details or an example, you can say that user accounts are used to log into computers that are connected to this domain. You can say that group policies are policies used to apply different permissions to all the computers or users on this domain. Question number seven, what is a domain? The answer to this is actually very similar to our previous questions. Domain is a computer network that has user accounts, computers, printers, and group policies. So if they want to, to give a little bit more of, of a simpler explanation, you can say that all the computers on their network are connected to a domain, which you would log into. 
and it's a centralized location for each one of those components. Question number eight. You receive a trouble ticket that states, my printer is not working properly. It prints out weird pattern on the paper. It is not working. Please assist. What do you think the problem is? Guys, this is a typical printer driver issue. The answer to this is that you would reinstall or get a proper printer driver in order to resolve this issue. Question number nine. What are some commonly used LAN cables? There are four different types of LAN cables, CAT5, CAT5E, CAT6, and CAT6E. CAT5 and CAT5E are typically good up to the speed of 100 megabits connection, although CAT5E can sometimes be even faster than that. Um, CAT6 and CAT6E are good for the speeds upwards of one gigabit a second, so a gigabit network speed. Question number 10. What is blue screen of death? Guys, I'm sure you've seen this before. You, you'll be in the middle of something on your computer and then your computer suddenly just crashes. You get that blue screen with a countdown and it's saying this or that. This is caused by a hardware or software conflict or both. Usually, um, a lot of times from personal experience, I found it to be a hardware issue, but sometimes it's a driver issue as well. So it's one of those things where you'd have to take the whole computer apart, chances are. First of all, um, you would you should do a diagnostic on the computer. Like So for, the, for your interview answer, you should say that you would do a full diagnostic of the hardware first, and then make sure you have the most update or most, most up-to-date drivers for each piece of the hardware that you have because chances are any of those things could be causing this blue screen of death. Another thing to do is take the computer apart. So take the computer apart and, and clean it, right? Reslot everything. Open up the computer. Remove the RAM. Remove the video card. Remove the network interface card. Anything else that's attached to it. Clean it. Plug it back in. And then go from there. Question number 11. What is DHCP? DHCP is also known as Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It is used to allocate IP addresses for every computer that's on a network. So any computer that's connected to a network will get its own unique IP address that's assigned by the DHCP server. Question number 12. What is DNS? DNS is a domain naming service. It's, what it basically does is it takes the binary um, instructions and translates it into something that a computer or humans can understand. So for example, an IP address, it takes the zeros and ones and turns them into a number. Question number 13. What is VPN? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. So um, to put it in, in a perspective, um, somebody that has a laptop that belongs to a company and is trying to connect from home to the company's network. Uh, before they do that, they would have to create a virtual private network at home and then connect through that virtual private ne network that is secured to the business's network. Question number 14. What is a ping command and what is it used for? Ping is used to basically test the connection between two points on the network. So in order to see if there is a connection between two points, you would use a ping command. So for example, if you want to see if you can reach out to Microsoft.com, you would go to the command prompt, type in ping space Microsoft.com. And from there, you will get results 
on whether you're able to reach Microsoft.com or not. Question number 15, what is a group policy? Guys, group policy is basically um, for all the departments within a business, each one of them will have a group policy for the users of that group. So in Active Directory, you have users and then you have group policies. And each one of these users is placed into a certain group policy that applies for that team. For example, HR will have their own group policy. Accounting team will have their own group policy and so on and so forth. Group policy basically gives certain permissions for example, whether the user can create icons or save files in a certain place, even things like whether they're able to shut down or restart their computer. Question number 16, what is a PST file? PST file is an extension for an archived Outlook data file. So every time you create an archive, within Outlook, its extension will be .pst, hence known as a PST file. So it's simply an archive file. Question number 17, how would you change folder permissions? In order to change folder permissions, you will go to the folders properties, go to the security tab, select edit, and then add and then from here you would type in a group name. So for example, if you belong to a group or the user belongs to this certain group, you can simply add the permissions for this group. So you would just type in the name of the group and then add it in there. Or you can add individuals to it. So you would uh, type in user's um, login ID. And then from there you can adjust the permissions. For example, the read, write, execute, or full permissions. <laughs> Question number 18, what is the difference between a switch and a hub? The difference between a switch and a hub is, for example, a hub, if you connect a bunch of computers to it, all the data connection speed is shared between all those computers connected to it. So basically what happens with a hub is that first computer that demands full speed from that hub will get all the speed. So all the other computers connected to it will inherently slow down. While a switch, switch allows for multiple computers to run at optimum speed. So all the computers connected to a switch will potentially be able to run at a full speed allowed for each one of those data streams. <laughs> Question number 19, how would you recover data from a virus infected computer? In order to recover data from virus infected computer, you would take the hard drive out of it first, take it to a second computer that has updated antivirus um, definitions, the latest patches, and the updated operating system. From there, you would slave the drive, scan it for viruses, and clean any virus that are on it, and then once done, you would copy the data that you're trying to recover to the secondary PC. Question number 20, why should we hire you? Guys, this question is so important. It's the most important question you'll be asked at the end of the interview. And this is your very last chance to sell yourself. So make sure you mention all of the experiences that you have, all the skills that you have, all the special traits that you have, and make sure that you're very confident with your answer on this. You don't want to be hesitant to basically sell yourself at this point. Incredibly important. Guys, and just as a tip for the end of this video, make sure you do your research for this company. Make sure you tail your resume so that it works for the position that you're trying to apply for. Do your research about the company because chances are that you will be asked what you know about this company 
on a first interview and that would be a chart interview most likely so if it's a you know big company you will do multiple interviews and the first one most likely will be through HR which they will you know ask you psychological questions you know personal questions so make sure you do your research about this company make sure your resume is up to date make sure it's um, up to date to the today's standards so you know you can do a search on google and see an example of a desktop support uh, position resume and tailor it according to that even if you have to take the one that template put it right next to yours and make it accordingly there's nothing wrong with that as long as you you, you tr put true information on there do not lie on your resume they will call you out on that okay be very very careful and as a last thing, thank you very much, guys, for watching. I wish you best of luck in this. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. Don't forget to share this video with family and friends. And I, again, wish you best of luck. Have a good one.